Representation in media matters, and people from all walks of life should be able to see themselves reflected in the things they love. Video games are no exception, and in the last 15 or so years, LGBT characters and stories have seen a marked increase on our consoles and PCs. After all, it's 2022 and it's time to get with the program. Gone are the days when LGBT characters were only villains or a nasty punchline, and now are the times when the sexuality and gender identity of characters can be something to celebrate. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are the 10 most powerful LGBT plus moments in gaming history. Number 10, Mass Effect 3, Romancing Caden. A good RPG needs more than action and adventure, and to draw you into its world you have to be able to connect with the characters. So for the last decade and a half, Western role-playing games have allowed us to get closer to our party of ragtag heroes more than ever before, forming close-knit bonds and even relationships. The original Mass Effect got caught in the crossfire for its sex scenes, one of which included the possibility of female Commander Shepard shacking up with mono-species but still quite feminine Liara. As such, to avoid becoming the ire of Fox News twice, same-sex relationships were totally cut from its sequel. So when Mass Effect 3 came, it was time to do a 180 degree turn and do right by its queer audience. Whether you're playing as female or male Shepard, the final instalment in the original trilogy finally offers gay romanceable options. Perhaps the sweetest and most fulfilling is watching the protagonist's relationship with longtime crewmate and friend Caden finally move from platonic to something much deeper. Male Shepard only has two same sex romance options, and Steve is nice and all, but there's something truly warm about connecting with Caden after all they've been through together. Number 9 Final Fight Poison Gets Her Respect Starting life alongside her palette swap friend Roxy in 1989's Final Fights, Poison was just one of many criminals on the streets of Metro City. However, anticipating controversy for the male-on-female violence, developers said that she was a new half, a Japanese term often used in a derogatory fashion to refer to trans women. Ironically, the pair were swapped out for two generic male thugs instead. Making her worldwide playable debut in Final Fight Revenge, Poison's gender identity was the topic of debate for a long time. Considered for years as trans in the US and cis in Japan by original designer Akira Yasuda, in 2011 he then confirmed that she was a trans woman, but it was more about the extent of her surgery, although like any human alive, what she has in those Daisy Dukes is not really of any significance anyway. In preparing for her coveted appearance in the Street Fighter X Tekken crossover, the company worked with GLAD, the gay and lesbian alliance against defamation to make sure her appearance was suitable and inoffensive. Finally, a queen gets the respect she deserves. While some may say that Poison's appearance as what appears to be a trans sex worker is a damaging stereotype, and there is some truth to that, others look to her as a powerful role model of a woman doing whatever she chooses with her own body. Number 8. Gone Home – Samantha's Story Gone Home is an entirely story-driven game that pushes the concept of video games as an art form. Players control protagonist Katie as she explores her family home on the day of arriving after an overseas vacation. Her parents and younger sister are nowhere to be found and, as Katie looks around, she begins to piece together what has happened in her absence. Reading younger sister Samantha's diaries reveals the winding tale of teenage love and all of its difficulties, exacerbated by her parents who refuse to accept the fact that their daughter is a lesbian. As the game draws to a close, Samantha leaves leaves home to be with her beloved. On its release, the game was adored by LGBT gamers for its relatable portrayal of queerness in the nuclear family. The importance and relevance of the title only seemed to grow when it was criticised by right-wing gaming audiences for existing, one can assume. This only spoke further to the isolation and segregation that the gay community, like Samantha, often feels. It runs the full range of emotion, sweet, heartbreaking and euphoric, all packed into a neat little 90-minute experience. The game does such an incredible job of telling its story and delivering its characters in that time that you'll feel like you spent years with them, especially if you've ever felt the way that they do. Number 7. Persona 4 – Kanji Struggles With His Sexuality in Japanese culture, the idea of coming out is far less of a positive and life-affirming thing, and it tends to be accepted that your sexuality remains in the closet. This is why Kanji struggles in Persona 4. The main crux of the game's story is dealing with hidden desires, and a dungeon created from Kanji's mind takes place in a men's bathhouse. The shadow version of Kanji, a reflection of parts of his internal personality, appears much more camp than the hardened biker that players had come to know to that point. Working at a textile shop and being a fan of sewing already makes him very aware of the idea that he doesn't adhere to the traditional male stereotype. Kanji shows shame and frustration at parts of himself that don't fit in with everyone's expectations. 
Kanji's ambiguous sexuality is something that developers Atlas worked hard to create, allowing players to come to their own conclusions. Their own statement on the matter is simply, what matters is that Kanji's other self cries out, accept me for who I am. Some believe that Kanji isn't queer and his story centres entirely on the behaviour and interests that harmfully are expected in men. Either way, the questioning of gender stereotyping is a subject that intersects with LGBT topics, and wanting to be liked for who you are is something we can all relate to. Number 6. Life is Strange – Just One Kiss Life is Strange came out of nowhere and did so at the perfect time. The game's tone and style, as well as its story of teenage rebellion and discovery, spoke to many gamers of all ages, especially young Tumblr kids who found the perfect pair to ship. Max, after discovering her ability to rewind time, reunites with her childhood friend Chloe, and their interactions are at the heart of Life is Strange. Max joins Chloe to investigate the whereabouts of her missing friend Rachel, as the title explores mental health, suicide, friendship and sexuality over its episodic run. With all the text and subtext, it becomes increasingly clear over the playtime that there is more to Max and Chloe's relationship than simply being friends. Life is Strange has multiple endings, all of which will leave you sobbing, where the player has to pay penance for their time manipulating powers, and choose between sacrificing their town or sacrificing Chloe. Whilst player agency decides how deep it goes, one possible ending sees the two finally embrace in the face of certain doom. Knowing that they can never be together, Max and Chloe share a kiss. Developers Don't Nod Entertainment never really intended for their game to become an LGBT milestone, but fully embraced it. Exploring Chloe and Rachel's journey, of queer self-discovery in the prequel Life is Strange 2 Before the Storm. Number 5. Caper in the Castro – The First Gay Game Whilst many gamers today may think that including more and more LGBT characters is forced representation, gay video games are not a new phenomenon. CM Ralph is credited with having written the first ever gay game that was specifically made by and for the queer community using HyperCard software for Macintosh way back in 1989. A visual novel murder mystery point and click, Caper in the Castro stars lesbian detective Tracker McDyke as she investigates the disappearance of her friend and drag queen Tessie Lefemme. Considering the time period it was released in, these names and much more references sprinkled throughout the game were made to make LGBT players smile as they were very much marginalised at the time. It also poked fun at conservative politics and made reference to the AIDS epidemic. With this still the topic of debate on TV, Ralph crafted the piece as charity wear. It was free to download from various LGBT servers online, but asked those that did so to make a donation to HIV and AIDS charities of their choice. It proved to be popular, being downloaded an estimated 250,000 times between 1989 and 1994, despite the fact that most people hadn't even heard of the World Wide Web at this point. Caper in the Castro set the stage for more gay representation in gaming in the future. Number 4. The Outer Worlds – Pavati is Asexual Every one of the possible companions in the Outer Worlds has their own personal quest, and drinking sapphire wine allows us to get closer to mechanic and all-around badass Pavati by listening to her wax lyrical about her love life. The way Pavati rambles about Jun Lei is all kinds of adorable and instantly makes you want to root for her success. Admitting that she's been previously referred to as cold because of her disinterest in sex refers to harmful stereotypes about asexuality that are endearingly represented here through one of the warmest members of the game's cast. It's hard not to love Pavati as she trips over herself swooning about her beloved and her concerns of the impact that her sexuality may have on their blossoming romance. Amazingly, players can choose to relate to Pavati and admit that they too have no interest in physical affection, and the pure joy that spreads across the character's face is euphoric. Asexual players everywhere reached out to hug their screens as Pavati pined that it was a lonely life. Asexuality is something that is sorely underrepresented in media, but Outer Worlds portrayal of the love-struck Pavati is wonderfully spot on. Number 3. The Last of Us Part 2 – Lev's Story the Last of Us's queer representation really blossomed with Ellie's story of self-discovery in the first game's DLC. As touching as it was, The Last of Us Part 2 certainly one-ups it if we're talking powerful moments. Lev is a young transgender boy who basically said a big no thanks to the gender norms of his society, the Sephirite cult. Sephirites shun technology, live off the land, and are led by a prophet who chooses who can and cannot have children. Cult members are given their duties from soldier to childbearer, and Lev questions these decisions from a young age. When it's decided for him that he will marry an elder of the clan, he shaves his head in an act of defiance, comes out as male, and is branded a traitor. Abandoning his upbringing, Lev and his older sister Yara go through 
through a lot throughout The Last of Us 2, but Lev's strength in the face of great pain and uncertainty make him a truly interesting inclusion to the universe. What's most important about Lev's appearance is that whilst a few games have included adult trans characters, it's immeasurably important to see a trans kid take hold of their destiny. Lev is a 13-year-old boy who is thrown off the shackles of his belief system, and his tale throughout the story is one that stays with us all. Number 2. Dragon Age Inquisition – Romancing Dorian Many Western RPGs in this era, such as Dragon Age, make their romanceable characters bi or pansexual, so that no matter how you play, you can woo whoever your digital crush is. However, the third entry in the franchise decided to do something wonderful when it crafted a specifically gay man. You can try to flirt with Dorian as the female Inquisitor if you wish, but it'll get to a point where he will apologise if you feel like he's been leading you on, because he's only interested in men. Dorian's backstory is a sad one that reveals he was never able to embrace his true self in his homeland, and that his father even tried to use blood magic to change his sexuality. If the player chooses to continue to get close to Dorian, they can become intimate and in the afterglow discuss the boundaries of their relationship. Even the idea of being in a relationship with a man seems foreign to Dorian, who had no idea such a thing was accepted due to his sheltered upbringing. Watching and even assisting the character in finding himself is an incredibly endearing and rewarding experience. Having a lot of bisexual characters is great, but crafting Dorian who is exclusively gay meant that it wasn't up to the player to decide. He is who he is, an all too important facet of one's journey of self-discovery. Number 1. Tell Me Why – Lakeside with Michael Tell Me Why continued Don't Nod Entertainment's exploration of LGBT characters by being the first AAA video game to put a trans man in its lead role as performed by trans voice actor August Aiden Black. After spending a decade apart, twins Tyler and Allison return to their childhood home after the death of their mother, and discover they have a supernatural psychic link. That being said, what makes Tell Me Why so powerful is how it represents queerness in completely healthy and unremarkable ways. Despite Tyler having his own wealth of childhood trauma, this does not inform his gender identity and is treated entirely separately. Moreover, allowing Tyler to spend time with Michael just being guys is incredibly refreshing and important. There is an unspoken, outdated idea that masculinity and queerness are diametrically opposed, and the two men hanging out ice fishing, drinking and talking about the wilderness is proof positive that this is not the case. The scene is lovely whether you have elected to stay merely friends with Michael or entered a relationship with him, in which case it ends with a kiss at sunrise. It may not seem like much, but considering there is a sad, long history of portraying trans and homosexual characters as villains or jokes, there is something special about the understatedness of queer people just living their lives. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, and whilst you're down there, why not let us know about other powerful LGBT plus moments in gaming that affected you. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit the notification bell. I've been Cy from What Culture, and happy Pride.